Hello everyone, welcome to the Jeeva Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my series on climatology. So if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. So in this session on climatology, we are going to talk in details about air pollution. In the previous sessions, we have already talked about smog and its various characteristics. So in this session, we are going to look at the entire air pollution factors and important points. So before we go ahead, please subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now when we have understood about the smog, the fog, all the pollutants, primary and secondary in the previous sessions, now it's the right time to talk about air pollution. So if you have not watched the earlier videos on the fog and smog situation, the situation of national capital region, which is related to the phenomena of wind as well as stubble burning and all those things that we talked, please go to the playlist and you can watch there. In this situation, we need to understand this entire scenario of air pollution. What are the important things that we need to discuss here is the causes, consequences and the ways that we monitor. And important is what, where, how and why. These four questions are important to answer when we talk about air pollution. So in this session, let's understand what is air pollution, where is it happening mostly, how is it happening and what are the reasons for it and what can we do about it, how it is being monitored. So all these questions are important. Let's answer these questions. So now, when we see this air pollution question that what it is, remember when there is a pure air in mixture state in natural state then we say it is nitrogen, oxygen, carbon dioxide, water vapor and other gases that is aerosol. It is in a fixed proportion. Remember in the first lecture in climatology we talked about the composition of atmosphere and structure. So there we understand that this is a pure composition. Now when this purity is mixed with impurity that is where the pollution starts right. So if the composition of the air alters by any means not necessarily human means if it is altering naturally as well, then also it is considered as pollution because the purity is now going towards impurity, right? From pure to impure, that is what we call the process of pollution, right? So why is it important for us? Why are we concerned about it? We are concerned because of this human health factor, environmental factor, and it is also hazardous to other living creatures as well. So let's elaborate furthermore on this air pollution. So if we want to look into the definition or dictionary definition or for that matter the government definition, what is it? The Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981 defines the pollution, air pollution specifically in this particular statement. So what is this? Air pollution is the presence of any solid, liquid or gaseous substance in the atmosphere in such a concentration. Now remember this is the catch here. It is solid, liquid or gas, that is one important thing, but the concentration is important as may be or tend to be injurious to human beings or other living creatures or plants or property or environment. So these are the things that are associated with pollution. Remember, so the air pollution is actually when these mixtures that is solid, liquid, gaseous substances actually create menace for human beings or for that matter for other flora, fauna, even it is creating damage to property or environment. In those cases, it can be considered as air pollution. Now, the next factor is who does it affect? So remember air pollution affects everyone and this is the biggest thing that we need to understand. It's not like somebody will be saved and somebody will not get affected. Remember air pollution when we say almost everyone it is 99.99% of people right. So that is important that almost everyone human beings, plants, animals, every being is actually affected by air pollution. So over 90% of the world population lives in places where air pollution is above WHO guidelines and this is the WHO report telling us. So remember what is the situation of the world that WHO guidelines for the pure air or for the fit air it's not there in 90% of the world's population situation and that's very worrisome and India has almost half of top 50 most polluted cities in the world. So in context to India, if you observe half of the 50, top 50, it means almost 25 to 28 places we have or 28 cities we have of the world which is actually contributing to more air pollution. So this is important. China has eight major cities. Iran has three major cities if you look into the area of southern part of Asia and Africa is highly polluted but little measured. So even if this data is not available for African cities as well. So what you see in context of India, we are contributor to most of the world's air pollution. If you observe almost half of the 50 
that is half of the top 50 polluted cities exist in India in terms of air pollution. So that is very much worrisome fact and it has to be like a national emergency if you talk about air pollution. So now the next question is why is it a concern? It is a serious concern for these countries like Pakistan, Iran, India, UAE, China, Peru and mostly if you observe these countries are what countries? They are so called referred to as developing countries or third world nations. Remember, this is a big problem that recently even Australia has joined the cause because of the wildfires that we see, right? So air pollution is now considered to be world's largest environmental health threat. And the most important thing is that this is not being talked every day. This is the largest environmental health threat that we need to understand that air pollution matters. So air pollution is now considered to be the largest health hazard and 7 million deaths around the world every year happens. Reason is air pollution. So it causes and exacerbates a number of diseases, right? From asthma to cancer to pulmonary illness to heart disease. And this is where we need to worry about this air composition, the pollution and how it impacts our health and the entire ecosystem, the entire planet. That's important. So now look into these data through the maps and understand where maximum pollution is happening through this pollution index. And this is data from 2019. So what you observe in this map, look into the concentration. And here what you see is this concentration towards this red end is actually maximum. So what you see, South Asia looks like the hub of pollution here. Right. That is where for India, it is a worrying factor. Now, if you observe India's pollution index is 75.55 of 2019, then Pakistan 74.78, China 81.24, then Bangladesh is 88.81. Then you have Myanmar that is 93.8. Then you have Sri Lanka, which is 58.38. And further, if you observe in this data, what you observe that if you see this US air quality index ranking and the date here is 8th January 2020. This data if you observe we are at second number according to this air quality index given by United States. So Nepal is 191, India is 191, Dhaka in Bangladesh is 188 and remember what is here? This is almost the cities of India what you observe here is in top 5 if you see Kolkata and Delhi are named here in this ranking as well. So this is where it's telling a story of Indian urbanization and air pollution related to it. Now let's understand this question. Nobody asks this question that even if you are polluting air, it has a cost. So remember, air pollution is not just independent of cost or economy. It is adversely impacting us. That is one thing. And this impact also has a cost as well. So it is like double thing, right? It's had double impact. One is it is impacting the health and also at the same time, it is actually losing on economic front. So according to World Bank report of 2016, if you see the lost lives and ill health caused colossal economic burden. So almost dollar two twenty five billion lost labor income in two thousand thirteen. Then five point eleven trillion per year is a loss, and dollar one million per minute that we are losing because of air pollution. So this is where it is worrisome that if you look into economic stats, into this data of World Bank report of 2016. Now it must have gone somewhere else. It's about losing one million dollars every minute across the world. If you observe only because of air pollution. So that is how big it is. Even if you look at economically through World Bank report. Now the next important point is what are the different sources? So here's the list natural sources like volcanic activity, wind blown dust, forest fires, soil outgassing. This keeps happening, right? And this outgassing has started more of this concern in the Arctic zone and Antarctic zone where because of the global warming. Now you have this CH4 release that is methane release which were earlier hidden. So this degassing outgassing started happening also. So this is a natural source and anthropogenic source. This is a huge list. So emission from industries, vehicular emission, marine vessels, airplanes, waste disposal landfill sites, open burning of these areas where you have lots of garbage disposal happening and crackers as well in the list. So these are the list of all those sources of air pollution. Now this is the list of air pollutants that we need to remember. So black carbon, nitrates, sulfates, ammonia, ozone, mineral dust and SPM that we say, right? So this is what we say is the list of all the air pollutants that we also need to remember. Now one thing that we need to understand is most of this air pollution is produced by burning fossil fuels or for that matter wood based fuel. 
So this is where the entire climate change concept and anthropogenic concept is coming in that stop burning fossil fuel, find alternatives, right? That is where the sources like solar energy, wind turbines, these are coming in. So this is important that burning fossil fuel started to a maximum extent in the industrial revolution around the world in 18th, 19th century and gradually it picked up throughout the world, right? So for driving, heating, power plant, industrial needs, daily needs, maximum fossil fuel are burnt and this is where the biggest contributor to air pollution comes into the picture. Now, the most damaging are the tiny particles which we say PM. Now, remember, we always keep hearing this in news that SPM or PM is there and it has increased. So what is this all about? Let's understand. So PM10 when we say it is less than 10 micrometer that is talking in diameter size of that particle. So this is talking about a particle size. Less than 10 micrometer, it is PM10. Less than 2.5 micrometer, PM2.5. And it is PM1 that is less than 1 micrometer in diameter size of this particle that is important to remember. So major components of PM, what are those? Sulfate, nitrates, ammonia, sodium chloride, black carbon, mineral dust and water vapor. So this is what we see is the entire composition of these particulate matter. And why is it important? Because they not only damage the lungs but enter the bloodstream as well because they are so tiny. Remember that and that is where it is actually hampering the function of our vital organs and that's where it also leads to the dysfunctioning of brain, liver, spleen, kidneys. So remember where this air pollution and particulate matter is translating. It is not just your lungs is being affected. So that is a common misconception that people think it is just the lungs. It's not that even the bloodstream is affected and the entire vital organs are being affected because of this. And that is what we remember that particulate matter is not as simple to understand in that way. It's just about the lungs, but it is all about the entire human body functions and other vital organs as well. So now if you look into this air quality index and according to WHO in micrometers, what you observe 0 to 50, 51 to 100. And this is the entire category from good to severe. So if you see this 0 to 50, 51 to 100, 101 to 200, 201 to 300, 301 to 400 and 400 to 500. This is the entire classification given by WHO. And what you see, good, satisfactory, moderate and here is the line. After 200, it starts becoming to this poor. So poor, very poor and severe situation. This is where you have this table also. You can pause the video and look into the table for yourself where these associated health impacts are also given that what quality of air impacts in what ways that is important. So if you look only at the severe case, it affects healthy people, seriously impacts those existing diseases. So if you already have a asthma problem, then you'll be more impacted. So this is one of the major issue that is happening. And let's understand what is happening to Delhi's air for that matter or NCR situation, which we have already discussed in the smog situation as well. Now look into this data of IIT Kanpur 2015. What you observe is that maximum of Delhi pollution comes from the fossil fuel burning that is 26.1% and also from diesel and petrol that is 29%. But apart from that, you have industrial pollution as 12%, biomass burning as 19.6%, dust pollution as 16.8% and open waste burning as 7.5%. So this is largely the data which was five years back if you observe. Now let's understand what is happening in this October November situation every year which has now started happening. So this is what we say is the stubble burning when this crop is actually cut and it has been harvested, the remaining stubble which is there is burnt to clear this for the next year crop. And this is burnt only because there is no alternative given to these farmers. So this is one of the major issues that is catching up in the media these days. And westerly and northwesterly winds in this time of the year, as we have discussed in the previous session also, it starts blowing from the west towards this interior of the India. So if you see this Punjab and Haryana situation and here is Delhi. So maximum of this concentration actually goes to this Delhi situation and that is where Delhi impacts the most in terms of this stubble burning. So this aggravates the situation. So what you see here is according to Central Pollution Control Board data, more than 3000 stubble burning incidents have occurred in Punjab and Haryana. Period between October 15 and November 15 is the most critical time. So this one month is the most critical time in terms of stubble burning and despite a ban on stubble burning in Punjab and Haryana, there are many farmers who don't have other incentives given so they actually burn it because there is a cost of actually clearing the stubble from the field. 
So this is where a balance has to be created. State governments are providing 50 to 80 percent subsidy to buy modern farm equipment for in situ management of this paddy straw and new te technologies are being developed. So Delhi government has recently initiated that these stubbles should be actually decomposed and it could be converted into biofertilizer and that could be one of the potential method where the agricultural organizations are working and remember there is a need for massive awareness campaign against stubble burning that is also parallelly the need of the art that is important now the last part of this session is the monitoring part so how do we monitor and control? Now remember Central Pollution Control Board, the apex body CPCB under Air Prevention and Control of Pollution Act 1981. This is the major organization, the central organization that looks into this monitoring part of this particular air pollution. So it was when in 1981 it was launched as a nationwide program and later on in 1984 remember Bhopal gas tragedy happened and then National Ambient Air Quality Monitoring Program this is called NAAQM it was actually started and this was renamed as National Air Quality Monitoring Program which is called NAMP and this is where all the monitoring functions happen under NAMP. So what you see is the number of operating monitoring stations under NAMP was 614 in 2016 and covering 254 cities across the nation that is about 29 states and 7 UTs that we say and Delhi Pollution Control Committee that is DPCC it is important to understand DPCC's role because it is one of the areas where Delhi Pollution Control Committee also takes a monitoring stand. System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research that is also called SUFFER this is important program of the IITM Pune that is of Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. So this actually monitors. So these are the important points that we need to remember in terms of the monitoring of this air pollution. And if you want to actually look into the real time data, the world's air pollution real time air quality index, you can go to this website that is waqi.info and look for yourself that what is the situation of the world in real time in context to air pollution. So now when we have learned the details of air pollution in the sessions to come we will be talking on other topics of climatology and also the series on oceanography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching.